Hey guys, welcome to some more A-level maths revision video. Today we're going to take a look at basically starting with the statistics. So, year one material, the first chapter is extremely dull. Um, so data collection and sampling, really, really boring. Mm. Um, try and stick with the stats, it does get better. Um, a lot of people still don't like it, but it definitely gets better than this chapter. This is by far the worst chapter. So, let's just jump into it today, we won't waste any more time. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at what we've got. Just a quick point here. Um, I've not included any large data set questions based on the fact that the large data set changes every couple of years. Um, it seems kind of pointless. Um, you know, the large data set questions aren't too bad. And I might just do a separate video later on in the future um, just to cover in that. But anyway, let's take a look at this first question here from the review exercise one. So we've got a researcher um, who's basically looking at these employees for his pension scheme. So, the company has 55 managers and 495 cleaners. So, the first part asks us to explain what is meant by a census and give one disadvantage of using it in this context. So, hopefully you are aware of what a census is. Um, so, it's the year 2021, um, well, while I'm filming this. And this is the year where we're doing the census. So, it's actually every 10 years that we do like the national census. Um, so, try and use the idea of the census giving you an idea. Um, so, a census... Census observes every member. Oops. Every member of a population. Okay. Of a population. So the census in this country gets sent out to every household and you're required to fill it out. So that's the idea here. Um, and that's what's likely happening in this context. But one disadvantage as you can imagine, is that it's very, very time consuming. Okay, so one disadvantage is that it is very time consuming. Even for something along these lines where there's only 500 roughly people, it's still very, very time consuming. Okay, so that's just our disadvantage there. So that's part A done. Part B now. So we're giving a bit more context here. So to collect data, the researcher decides to give a questionnaire to the first 50 cleaners to leave at the end of the day. So what kind of sampling method is this? Well, this is just an opportunity sample. Okay, so opportunity sample. Okay, so opportunity sample. C. Um, give two reasons why this method is likely to produce biased results. So, one, the first one is that it's not a random sample. Okay, so if it's just the first 50 people, then it's definitely not random. So, not a random sample. So, not a random sample. And then if you think about the actual context of what's happening, if these 50 workers... Um, or well, the first 50 cleaners, sorry, are leaving at the exact same time. So they're going to be the first 50 cleaners. If you think about how employment usually works in terms of something like cleaning, these cleaners are usually on the same shift. Okay, so the cleaners um, are, likely, are likely to work the same shift And if they work the same shift, there's a possibility that they may share the same views. Okay. And may share the same views. Okay, so that's just another reason there why it might give biased results. And then finally for part D, two parts. The first part, we just want to explain briefly how the researcher could select a sample of 50 employees using a systematic sample and then part B, a stratified sample. So, the first part for the systematic, remember a systematic sample is where, for example, you give, uh, like maybe just as an example, every fifth person, um, you know, they, they're part of the sample. So the fifth person, the 10th person, the 15th, the 20th, for example. So how do we decide um, who's part of the systematic sample? Well, first we need to know the total. So the total, 
that's going to be the number of cleaners plus the number of managers. So 495 plus 55 to give us 550 in total. Employees. Well, the first thing we should do is allocate every employee a number. So allocate a number. So allocate a number from one to five hundred and fifty to all employees. Okay. And then we need to decide which every nth number it is that we're picking. Okay, so is it every fifth person, tenth, uh, seventh, for example, how do we decide that? Well, if we want a, a, a sample of 50 people, 50 employees, and we've got 550 in total, then we just divide 550 by 50, okay? Which would give us 11, so we need every 11th person. Okay, so we need every 11th person. So we select the first em employee at random. We select the first employee at random between 1 and 11 to give us our first person. From 1 to 11. And then we select every 11th after. Like you can see, it is very, very systematic. It's quite long as well. Every 11th person after. So, for example, if our first one randomly is the fifth person, the next one would be 16. So, add 11 would be 16, 27, 38, so on and so on. I'm not going to keep going, but you get the idea there. Okay, so that's just the idea, though, with a systematic sample. And a stratified, so we should have enough room to just squeeze that in over here. A stratified sample. Well, what I'll do here is just work out each one individually. So we need to work out a stratified sample of the managers, of the cleaners, um, and then we're just going to choose it basically um, using random numbers. So to work it out for the managers, you take the number of managers, so 55, you divide it by how many there is in total, so 550 employees, and then we times that by the sample size that we've got. So we've got a sample size of 50. So we times that by 50. Okay, and if you work that out, what that tells us is that we should pick five managers. Okay, so five managers. If we do the same now with the cleaners, so that's going to be how many cleaners is there? 495. Again, divide it by the total. 550, and then we times that by 50 again. And that gives us uh, 45 cleaners. Okay. And then to finish that, all we need to do is use random numbers to choose five managers and 45 cleaners. So if I try and get it in the bottom. So use random numbers to choose 5C. Uh, sorry. 5 uh, managers, so 5M and 45C for cleaners. Okay, so that's how you'd finish that question off there, giving both of them. So that's that question fully done. Uh, let's take a look at the next one. The next one's taken from one of the old past papers on the old specs. This was from S3 from the June 2013 paper. So not quite as long as the last one. Again, very, very similar though. Like you can see here, we've got this context. Um, in a sense, we want to work out a few different things. So the first part here is asking us to give um, one advantage and one disadvantage of carrying the survey using two different sampling methods. So the first one is quota sampling. So for quota sampling, um, an advantage that you can give is that you can say it's quick to do, quick to perform. Okay. So, not like a census, we're going to save a lot of time, it's very quick to do. A disadvantage of a quota sample is 
The one disadvantage is that there's potential for bias there with a quarter sample. Okay, so potential for bias. So that gives us the quarter sample. Now for a stratified sample, again an advantage. Stratified samples, very good at being representative of the whole population. So representative. Of the whole population. Okay. What's well, one disadvantage to a stratified sample? And again, just to make it clear, there is other advantages and disadvantages you can give. These aren't, you know, exhaustive. So a disadvantage here. Um, it can be difficult with large populations. So difficult or not easy with large populations. Okay. So there are advantages and disadvantages there for our two different sampling methods. Part B, so just similar to the last one here, we're doing a stratified sample again, this time of 100 students. Um, we want to calculate the number of students to be sampled from each course. So, um, again, uh, just do the exact same method as what we did with that last stratified sample. So, we need the total. So, how many students is there in total? You're just going to add up the number of students enrolled for each course. So, if you add them all up, so 420 plus 337 plus 200 plus 43, we get a thousand students. Okay, so a nice number to work with there. So, if we work out leisure and sport first, so leisure and sport, that's equal to the number for that that individual cost, so four hundred and twenty divided by our total, which is a thousand. And then we did, and then we times that sorry by um, the sample that we want to work out, or the sample size, four hundred. Okay, and if you work that out, you get 42. So 42 people from leisure and sport. If we do IT now, so what's that going to be? Well, that's going to be 337 divided by 1,000 again. And then we times that by 100. And if you work that out, you get 33.7. Um, health and social care. Health and social care. That's going to be 200 divided by a thousand times by a hundred, and that'll just give us 20. And then finally, the last one. Um, this will be for media studies. That's going to be 43 divided by a thousand times by a hundred. If you work that out, you'll get 4.3 for that. Now we've just got to be careful here. Because obviously we've got these decimals. Now, don't forget, if you are taking a sample of 100 students, if you add each one of these up, you should really get 100. So what I'm going to do is round the decimals to the nearest integer. So 33.7. So that'd be 34. And 4.3. We'd write that as 4. Okay. Just be careful for that. Um, so make sure you round appropriately. And then for the very last part here, we just need to describe how to choose these students for the stratified sample. So, if I get rid of all this, we don't actually need it. Um, let's have a look at this one. So, part C. So, how do we, well, how do we choose the students for the stratified sample? So, first we need to identify each student. Identify each student and what course they're actually enrolled on. And the course they're enrolled on. And then once you've done that, I would do just like we did with the previous one, we use random numbers. So we use random numbers to select. the sample for each course. So like you can see, nothing too crazy. Just again, very methodical. Um, 
just make sure you're very kind of clear in how we do it. But that's all you've got to say. So that brings us into that question. And then we move on to this very last question here. Again, another past paper question from the old um, spec. So we've got a mobile library that has 160 books for children. Um, a librarian believes that the books with fewer pages are borrowed more often. So he takes a random sample of 10 books for children. So I explain how the librarian should select this random sample. So this is actually really, really short. It's going to take probably about 30 seconds at most. So to do a random sample, all we do is assign the books a number. So assign the books a number from. So it's from 1 to 160. We've got 160 books in total. And then we're going to use random numbers to select the 10 books. And then we use random numbers to select our 10 books. And there we have it. So that's two marks, believe it or not. Literally, it's two or three lines. Uh, not too much work. But anyway, that brings us to the end of this video. I don't know if you're still awake. I am barely awake. Um, such a dull topic, but hopefully it's helped um, in revision. If you do notice any tiny errors, there shouldn't be any, but if you do notice any, please just let me know down below.